So back here with my live set project, it is now time to look at the user page 1 and 2 of the launchpad. So we looked at the session view to send the clips, we've looked at the mixer page to enable the mixer sections in Ableton Live. Well, user 1 and 2 are for us to use, it's fully customizable. User 1 is more appropriate to control MIDI instruments. So let's go into our preferences and enable this. In the MIDI port section, in the input of the launchpad, enable the track and the remote. Let's do the same thing for the output, track and remote on. Once this is done, you're now ready to assign user page 1 and 2 to control parameters in Ableton Live. So I've loaded a sound cube onto a MIDI track here. You'll notice that this sound cube is not velocity sensitive and instead that each sound has its own MIDI note. I've layered this slightly differently. So they're not on top of each other's, but instead each sound has its own pad. So now let's record and enable this track over here with the arm switch. And now, in user page 1, I can trigger the sounds. Fantastic! So I can use that as a drumming matrix. Great! Let's have a little example. Let's send this thing, and you notice that this clip is ready to record. So, this is now ready to record back into user 1, I'm going to drum in real time, let's do it. And I've now enabled this sound, let's do another one. Let's undo this, come and Z, come and Z. That's it. Enable that. etc etc So this is a great way to start making loops in real time. So that's user page 1. It's dedicated, it's it's more appropriate to control the MIDI instruments. You could also very well use user 1 page to control any of your effects over here. Just like any other effect, you go into MIDI map mode and then you assign it pressing the pad then. But actually, user page 2 is actually more appropriate for this work. So yes, go to user page 2 instead. Oh, let's undo these controls here. And delete them. Let's now go to user page 2. Here we go. So let's assign some effects to my user page 2. Let's assign the flanger over here to this pad. And now, when I switch on the effect, the pad gets eliminated. That's because I've switched on the output on the MIDI port section of my preferences. So great, let's hear this. That's great. Let's enable my live cut control over here. And here we go. So now we can also control a range. So at the moment I was only controlling switches. Let's have a range of frequency on this auto filter for example. So you see I press this first pad on the row and I keep it pressed down and while it's still pressed down I press the last pad in the same row. And you'll notice now that we have a range assigned to this control, not just one MIDI note, but it goes from G to D sharp. Let's get out of knee map mode and demonstrate. Now I'll go, I've got a full control over this range, you see? It's quite incremental, but it's very useful. Let's switch the filter on and listen to it. Let's do the same thing with our resonance, why not? With the row just above. Press and hold the first pad in the row, and then press the last pad in the row. So I can now control the resonance and the filter for cutoff frequency. Let's have a look. Raise the resonance. And here we go. So that's some uh, some cool settings. Why not assign the crossfader over here? Let's assign the crossfader to a range as well, like so. And now I've got full control over the crossfader with this row over here. Look. 
that's on the right, that's on the left, that's in the middle. The way the crossfader works is with this A and B switches here. If a track is on A, it responds the left hand side and plays when the fader is on the left. If a track is on B, then it responds when the fader is on the right. So I could have all my drumming on the left and all my melodies on the right. Let's try this. Left and right in the middle. Like so. So that's another great way to control a continuous control in Ableton Live. So with one launch pad you could control your clip launching, you could control your mixer section and you control your effects. So this control is actually 4 times 64 controls. It's an amazing uh, platform to play with. You could also reassign the mixer section for instance. Once you have everything illuminated you can reassign these four rows for example. So so le let's have a look. Maybe I could load an EQ3 onto a track and control its its switches. So let's let's have an EQ3 on my drums here. Over here over here. Oh that's an EQ8, sorry. Let's have an EQ3 instead. There we are. And now I could control the killer switches with these buttons over here. You see? So the mix section top row here can be fully reassigned. You see now this is gone amber and you see I can now control my killer switches. So by staying in the mixer view I could have a few assignments done here and basically jam all my clips on and off and jam my effects over here right in the mix of you. So again, an amazing tool I'm telling you, it's it's fully customizable. Maybe you could go and have a peek at Novation's website. In there you'll find a few tutorials about their products and about the launch pad especially. You'll also find the driver to download for Automap. Automap is a free software that Novation has made basically to enable you to map your controllers, your Novation controllers, to any third-party plugins, software synthesizers and software samplers. So it's a great way to map your, your Novation controller like the launch pad. So please have a look at their website. It's a really well-made website and, uh, and you'll learn a lot through it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs>